Hi and welcome to history number three. Dr. Ken here. History helps make connections and it builds bridges. When connections are not obvious or available, history can be a very helpful way of putting stories and narratives together to help us remember and make meaning. So electrical history and your learning history. Your learning history within electrical is significant. Learning electrical physics is done in particular logical layers. And it's important you understand that there are these layers because one layer, just like building a brick wall, depends on the previous one. The internal history of your previous learning will impact your future learning. If you have not got all the concepts of the previous learning locked down and solidly understood, you're going to have difficulty as time goes on. So learning in segments and then data dumping it is a very poor approach. Or only learning just enough. Or only learning the required parts or what we call the T topics within electrotechnology and only learning in little silos and getting past the silos is a very, very poor approach. So how can history and its stories play an important role or part in our learning? There are significant parts of electrical theory, particularly in the early stages, that seem disjointed, and they actually are. History or the stories of electrical discovery can help give us a framework for our learning until we build some other formal connections. So history can be a temporary place or a temporary framework that we can use to remember and store and relate things until some of the other concepts come together. Some of the learning is simply declared. We will never be able to have relatable connections. So history can help us with some of those things. So one, there is some method in the apparent madness. In electrical trades, we start with WHS, mathematics and DC or direct current. But why, why do we bother? Why? It's because these units are foundational. Well, at least the WHS and the mathematics seem obvious. DC or direct current is foundational as a future concept and those other future concepts sit on this foundation. Even if you don't understand that right now, they do. When all said and done, the learning order is important. So when you first join the course as a first year apprentice to do electrical trades, you're given a list of all the units you'll do each semester and their delivery order within the semester and within the year and within the whole course are important. They have a reason. There is method in the apparent madness for why the subjects are delivered in a particular order. It's because we're getting underpinning knowledge in place that will be used in future units. Two, underpinning knowledge and skills. As I indicated in the previous slide, learning order has a value and it's very, very important. It is important that you take an integrated approach to your electrical physics. In other words, learn all the interconnections within the units and then the interconnections between the units. If your learning is just completed in segments within the units, you have only done half the learning. The next stage of the learning is to understand the connections between the units. This is integrated learning. It's what I call the big picture versus the little picture. The big picture is an all of course perspective and the little picture is the unit itself. Here the skill is to first is firstly note the two perspectives and secondly then actively find and understand the links between the units. This helps us bring meaning, and once we have meaning, 
we've actually achieved the learning. So next step, number three, connecting stuff that has no connections. There is some stuff we have to learn in electrotechnology that has no actual connections. And I'll give you an example of that shortly. So there are parts of electrical physics that have connections, labels and ideas that don't have connections. We can link together and so obtain some meaning. So there are some parts of electrical physics that have concepts, labels, ideas that don't have some nice obvious connections. So we're going to have to create some. In these cases, we have to generate links or stories to create meaning and so produce our learning. These kinds of concepts we call declarative. That is, the name of the concept is just declared to be so. And I'm going to give you two examples of this. The first example is the resistor colour code system which you learn in DC. Each number between 0 and 9 have been assigned a particular colour. Why? We don't know. It has just become a declared norm. So we often use stories to describe the colours. And the colours, if you look down the little chart here, start with black brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, grey and white. And if you were to go on the internet and look up stories colour codes, you'll find about 20 or 30 stories that link the colour codes together. So all you've got to do is remember the story and it helps you remember the colour code. So we call that creating declarative links for things that have no, what we would call a procedural aspect or a systems aspect to it. The second example is the label given to electrical quantities. An example is resistance is in ohms, and that's just named after George Ohm, a British physicist. We know that why the name, but the name bears no actual relationship to the physics. It's just history. We use history in this particular case to create the story. So with the resistor color codes we generate a story and with George Ohm we might learn a little bit about George and the development of Ohm's law and his place in history and that will help us remember that Ohm's are named after George and resistances are measured in Ohm's. For electrical history. To be human is to love and learn through the telling of stories. That's just a part of what it is to be human. We love to learn by connecting together things with stories. We are wired for imagination and one of the best ways we can use imagination in learning is through the exploring of electrical history and stories. The characters are big their stories are even bigger and their achievements impact us every day, even if you don't know and understand it. Electrical history is a way of taking advantage of our love of storytelling. Not mythical stories, but stories of adventure and discovery that will provide you handles for learning. Ways you can connect the learning and remember different aspects and characteristics of the physics. The best story in recent times has been produced by the BBC. It's called The History of Electricity. It runs for two hours, but it's worth every minute. It's quite interesting, engaging, and tells the history of electricity from 200 years ago right up until today in a very innovative documentary style. So chase out the stories of people like Michael Faraday, Nikola Tesla, George Westinghouse, and Thomas Edison. These stories and their places in history will give you some wonderful handles on which to build your learning. So what are our take homes from electrical history? You have an internal personal history to maintain and exploit. 
So the history of your own learning. Learning of electrical physics is done in logical layers. So take advantage of the layers. Learn each layer and learn it consistently. Don't just learn in segments and then data dump. That's a poor approach. Learn the whole unit and learn how the unit connects to the next one. History and its stories play an important part of our learning. Note when learning has no apparent links, you can make up your own links. And those links can be permanent or they might be just temporary until other links become obvious. History or the stories of electrical discovery can give us a framework for our learning until we build those more formal connections and if they never come at least we have the history framework which will help us remember and connect the concepts together. So I hope you've enjoyed our little cognitive tool number three, electrical history. It plays an important, a very, very important part of our learning and I would encourage you to take the time to watch that BBC video the history of electricity.